My name is Rachel Hart, and I'm a musician, singer-songwriter, and I had the pleasure to work with Bob in the early 2000s. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to talk uh, about the experience of recording here in a little while. Uh, but s start by telling me about your friendship with Bob and how you came to know him. I came to know Bob, um, as I was mentioning, in the early 2000s. Uh, he's a friend of my husband, Will McCauley, and uh, that was the connection there. So there are a bunch of musicians, ragtag musicians in Hamilton, and um, uh, drawn to, you know, the Grand Avenue studio and I've done some recording there with um, uh, some other people and, you know, just getting to know one another in, in musical events and, and stuff like that. So, okay. yeah. It's 2005 and you've written a number of songs for your album, Warrior. How did it come to be recorded here at the shack? Um, it probably wouldn't have been recorded at all um, had it not been for Bob in our lives and, um, he, you know, when we were jamming around the house and stuff like that, maybe at our house or here, you know, he really got into some of those those songs and and um, made me realize that, you know, it was really something to to do something about. And so, you know, he was he was living here and thinking about putting a studio together and, you know, slowly pieces, big pieces, because at the time they were nice, you know, um, uh, gorgeous equipment and they would arrive piece by piece mm -hmm. and um, sooner than anything he had the studio here and his neat mixers already and and uh, it was just kind of the right timing and um, the right connections in the sense of um, you know that genuine you know connecting at the heart and and really and really making about music and that vibe that you know we were all searching for and you know laying into and stuff so that's what happened. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so in, in as much detail as you can get into, I'd love to hear about the experience of recording in here and what it's like having Bob as your sound engineer. Yeah, so more than sound engineer, he was basically like a sorcerer. Um, <laughs> it, it, Bob was very close to the elements. Um, he lived here close to the elements by choice. Um, but he, he was also always, um, he was activated by the elements, so by, by the wind, by the light, um, and, you know, that stillness that comes from being in the woods. I think that's why he was very drawn to live here in, um, and felt his probably his purest self or his highest self. But that, that was very inspirational to us as well, because you don't need anything else, really. You just need each other. Mm -hmm. You just need your instrument. But you, and, and also, more than anything... I thought uh, of what he is, is like he, he kind of helped us to learn how to cultivate presence, you know, by being activated by the elements, but also in the presence of one another. Right. So I feel like that is truly how the album um, came to be. We kept that going all the way through. Sometimes we used microphones that were, um, you know, I didn't. Pl I think we plugged in, but we might not have used that track for plugging uh, for the instrument. It was, you know, he liked the sound of the room. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, to bring that in, and, and and I think what he was also trying to do, because he was a visual artist as well as a photographer and videographer and so on. I think what he was always trying to do was bring a visual component to the sound, and. Um, and that's something I really resonated with. And, you know, we just kind of, like I said, we, we searched for the vibe. We, we, we laid inside the vibe and we tried to respect it enough not to, to disrupt it, um, which is also, I think, sort of, you know, for living in the shack, that's, that's, I think, what he was going for, not to be disrupted in that present awareness that he might have had or, um, you know, that we all did when we, we made it about music. Right. So tell me about, um, I hear, I'm hearing a lot of things about Bob, you know, kicking people's ass and really getting them to come out of their comfort zone and um, try things that are uncomfortable that you're not used to. Do you have any sort of experiences or um, insights into how he might have pushed you to be a better musician? Yeah, he was a great teacher. And I, I know I really respect a teacher who um, challenges you to because they, they see something in you. And often an artist takes themselves too seriously and they, and they you know, they, they, they're, they're blocked by that. But he would just be like, look, don't worry about all that. Just, just, you know, he, 
he challenged you. Mm -hmm. And um, I resonated with that. I was activated by that. I enjoyed it. And I was so young at the time. And to have somebody's attention that I, I was very aware that he had tons of life experience. And, um, but I could tell it was always coming from a pure, like he just loved it. Mm -hmm. And like the thing about musicians is, you know, you can, you can aspire as a musician and you can do it. But the thing is, is like, He, some some musicians are like we. It saves our lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Music saves our lives, right? right? Mm -hmm. And he was like that. And even whether whether he was in the teaching role or recording world, he just that was that um, urgency. So he he was always like urgent for you to just get yourself out of the way and and um, allow that full vibe to come through you. So you know, I yeah, was yeah. I, I was fine by it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I was younger, and I think he just, um, he went a little easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> outside of recording and outside of music, tell me about Bob as, as your friend. Oh, it's like just, you know, epic nights, epic days, epic afternoons. They were always, like, Bob style, very, you know, epic. Because like I said, you know, it was the best sunset you've ever seen you know when you'd be swimming at long point or mm. you know or it was the best meal you ever had because you know like it just I just feel like um we were really lucky you know he saw my kids grow up he um spent a lot of time with them laughed cried you know bumped and bruises mm -hmm. all the way along you know so um I'm I'm very fortunate to have known that side of him the family side you know, him with children, yeah. and he was the same with them too, you know, always challenging them, talking about their gifts and talents, and um, they, they, they responded to that too, you know, mm -hmm. he, he's totally inspired them in their lives, and they, they talk about him, and, you know, we, we can ha share those funny stories, Yeah. you know. Good. Um, so I'm going to ask you two questions. You, again, answer them however you like. Tell me what is the lasting impression that Bob has left on you as an artist? What, have you, what did you learn from Bob that you still to this day apply to your art? Alchemy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, we're talking about alchemy. And I think he <laughs> knew about it. And he, he you know, I think he, he, he thought about it. I think he um, acted it out, um, activated others. And he, that's why I think it's, you know, the sorcerer thing. He, he got it mm -hmm. and he gave it to everybody. Good. What do you believe to be Bob's legacy uh, as it relates to music? Um, purity, you know, don't pretend to be something you're not. Just be who you are and um, shine that out best you can. You know, like I said, music uh, saves our lives. It's very true, but mm -hmm. also believing in one another, um, chasing that, um, that next, that trend, you know, he, he was great at coming up out of the crowd and, and just, you know, seeing where is that, you know, where are people's t attention being drawn? And, um, he was, he was really good at that. So he, you know, he liked to believe in others and, um, help others facilitate others and, you know, in serving one another, that's that's the best way to bring honor to um, music and art, and so that it continues it continues on with some longevity. Mm -hmm. So I think he probably gave that to all of us, no matter what. Even if he did kick our ass, I'm mm -hmm. really glad about it. Yeah, yeah. So, Good. Um, what's it like being back here? Emotional, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but comforting. I feel comforted that I I truly got to spend some quality time with a. Uh, you know, an awesome individual. No, made no apologies for those things. And, um, you know, I'm happy to say he's part of me. I feel like home here, actually. It doesn't feel like it's been that much time. And um, so, yeah, I'll just, just continue on that long road. Good. Uh, and do you have anything else you wanted to add or say about Bob, about your experience with him? Anything that you want to say? I think um, just thanks, you know, like thanks for being a, 
a, a, a friend in in that present awareness. Thanks mm-hmm. for you know loving the birds and living you know living pretty pure. Mm-hmm. And for all of us to to say you know that's a great thing to aspire to to just live within nature and serve one another. That's about it. Excellent. Good. Watching a hawk soaring in flight That rustling of feathers she soared all day And as that sound came dripping down That red tail hawk she never came down Show me the sun Show me the sun Show me the sun What's your medicine? White main wolf walked in my dream Most beautiful queen I'd ever seen Fierce, protecting, gentle and kind Swift on her feet, yet calm in her mind Well, show me the sun Well, show me the sun Well, show me the sun 